absolute certainty that 98% of them are coming back to the city from which they are sent. And when I send 25 or 30 to the penitentiary, as I have in the last couple of weeks, uh, I would say at least 99% of them will be back to Doherty County doing the same thing again unless we can teach them what is right and what is wrong. Okay, Judge, how much do these programs cost to serve the Doherty County population? Well, it's a minimal amount. Uh, the city and the county had put up $100,000, which when translated to the individual's treated is practically nothing. I think uh, during this past year, I think uh, over 500 were treated. Is that right, Mr. McDonald? 600. About 600. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of those were required who could to pay. But I think of the 600, over 19 were able to pay anything. So you see, it's a losing battle as far as those involved in the program, they don't make a penny out of it, really. And it's uh, an act of community service to provide the service for these indigents and the juveniles and for offenders generally. And that's the reason I think it's so vitally important that it be continued and it be continued on a larger scale because, after all, if it is discontinued, then that means I'll send twice as many people to the penitentiary that I'm sending now. That's what it boils down to. Thank you, Judge. When we come back, we'll talk more about the ramifications of indigents and juveniles not having this kind of program available to them. Ray Cobb Sports and Entertainment presents the 10th Annual Emmy Awards for Sports, honoring the greatest moments from the memorable events of 1988. It's the only place to relive the year's best from all the major networks. Join Tim McCarver, Bob Costas, John Madden, and many more of your favorite sports personalities for this exciting one-hour special. See all the magic moments when Ray Cobb Sports and Entertainment presents the Emmy Awards for Sports. Next Sunday afternoon on WALB. If you're fascinated by it. Oh my goodness, look what they're saying here. It's on Donahue. Excitement, passion, lust. After 35 years of marriage, they've lived together for three decades and they're more in love now than they were the day they're married. That's what they say, how they've done it, how they've kept this relationship alive, exciting. Hear their secret formulas on the next stop. Monday morning at 9 on WALB. We were talking about the ethical education program in Doherty County and the lack of funding that is preventing some people from getting this kind of program. Dr. Richard Anson, how effective is an ethical education program? Well, we've never really evaluated ethical education per se, but as Judge Kelly has uh, pointed out very clearly, ethical education is one tool amongst the whole arsenal of tools that we use as a last resort here in Doherty County to fight crime. Uh, back in February of 1983, uh, I was approached by some private citizens and funded by a group of private citizens that were concerned very much with whether a particular program that used ethical education was effective or not. Uh, I went into the police records, both county and city police records, and took a sample of 71 offenders that had been exposed to not only ethical education but an abuse. It was a program called the CAP program. CAP stands for Criminal Alcoholic Program. And what I observed was I, I compared their uh, actual behavior, not attitudes, but behavior, their actual behavior two years before they completed CAP and two years uh, after they finished. And I found very dramatic statistical drops. Uh, there was something like a 60% reduction just in arrest rates alone. There was a 60% reduction in the number of offenses they had committed and dramatically an 80% reduction in the number of DUIs. Um, if I had to really summarize in a, in a thumbnail 
uh, the significance of that study is, is that we found that the people that benefited the most from it were those people that were youthful uh, under the age of 34. So it looks to me like there's uh, uh, some evidence that what Judge Kelly and what Mr. McDougall have been saying for years now is, is the truth, that uh, the combined effects of and abuse, ethical education, character education, drug testing, that those things do have a, a positive impact on repeat offenders, people that have committed two and three offenses before they're eventually put into these programs. Mr. McDougall, from your experience working more closely hands-on with the program, do you feel that the lack of funding, which is going to result in juveniles and indigents not having the program available to them, is that cutting out the people who need the program most and could benefit from it the very most? I think everybody's got to learn right from wrong and that is ethical education but basically those who do the community the most damage by not having it are the ones who are now denied it. How is that? And that's going to hurt us. Well, if you commit a crime that's not honoring ethics and the ones that are court offenders obviously need it the most to reduce the damage to the community from immoral behavior. They're the ones causing the damage. Actually, only about 8% um, of the population causes 85% of the crime. If you can get a hold of those and straighten them out, it would be a big reduction. This is what the military did. Some say a community can't do what the military did, but that's, that's not accurate. A community can do what the military does. Each sentencing judge has more power over an offender, more authority over an offender than a base commander has over any soldier. When, when that fellow's up for sentencing, he belongs to the judge. And he wish he was back in the military and out from under the judge. The, the ironical thing mm -hmm. in this whole discussion is that for years, going back to the 1960s, many sociologists blamed the problems of a community on the judiciary, uh, during the 60s, we had institutions that were questioned and, and challenged. Uh, many blamed the, the, the overcrowding problem, the prison and jail overcrowding problem on the sentencing patterns of judges. Judges were sentenced too harshly. Uh, judges sentenced too leniently. And what we've come to find out is none of that is true. Uh, in fact, in a recent data set that we received from the Department of Corrections, we examined certain correlations and found that the most strongest predictor of prison and jail overcrowding had nothing to do with the judiciary at all. It was the high crime rate. And communities have not done enough proactive in the area of trying to reduce the crime problem. If you'll reduce the crime problem, then I think you'll have an effect on the prison and jail overcrowding problem. Dr. Anson, you mentioned at the outset of the program that in, in large part the, the increase in, in crime nationwide and especially in our state is, is due to drug abuse. How effective are these kinds of programs? Are they more or less effective with, with drug abusers? Well, I can tell you this. The sample that I looked at was 